it's, it's quite a small um, world still, but it's, it's a world that's getting bigger. I think like a year ago, um, if you'd asked people whether data was journalism, a lot of journalists would have kind of scoffed. And I just think that we've had so many kind of big exercises in the last year, where th- we shows how things have changed. You know, we've had WikiLeaks, and um, we've had these big government data releases. And I think journalists are coming around to the view that actually if you can't analyse this stuff and you can't work properly as a journalist. And um, so it's getting, uh, yeah, I think it's a world that's going to get bigger. Hopefully, and I think also it's going to just become part of being a journalist. You know, imagine now a reporter not using the internet. Yeah. You can't imagine that. Huh? So I think that's what it'll be like. You know, a reporter not being able to use spreadsheet will be similar in a few years' time. And um, uh, we launched the data blog. It was the first thing we do. Nobody really understood why we wanted to do it, and it was kind of a new thing. So we just launched a blog about data. And we thought, who will want to look at that? And we thought it would be just developers or people who want to build applications. But actually, what's happened is it's, it's kind of real people that want to look at the data. So it's grown from something quite small to something which has become bigger and bigger. And also, a lot of what we've been offering has kind of expanded. So now we do searches. You can search the world's government data using our world government data search or you can search the world's development data and we also realised there's a big blogosphere out there of other people interested in data so what we want to do is kind of pull all that stuff together so now on the site what we've got is you know all the stuff that comes up on the data blog but we've also f- made it easier for people to find previous things we've done or other data sets that we've published and we've published our kind of guide to the best bits of the blogosphere that other people are tweeting and blogging out there about data and um Really, what we want to do is make it a destination for people. If you're interested in data, you'll come here and you'll, you'll use us as a starting place to look for it. Well, I guess um, I mean, there'll be three WikiLeaks releases, and it's true to say the first two will probably involved us more than the cables release. With the cables release, we did do a kind of a breakdown, I can show you. I don't know if you can see from the camera you can see on the screen. So this is um these were all the cables released and obviously it wasn't every cable that was released. Um but it's this it's a selection of what two hundred fifty one thousand odd. So we just thought we put together something about what is this data? You know, because the data that people have been pouring over, like I say, it's not every cable that's been released, it's only some. So who are they, where are they from, what are they about? And kind of that was become our role with this story, was just to try and say, this is the data set, this is what you're looking at, and this is what the stories are about. What's interesting about this data set is it turns out that um, with the American diplomatic system, there's something like three million people around the world who are entitled to see secret documents. So how secret is a secret anymore, you know? What we found was with the first two releases, the Afghanistan and um, Iraq releases, there was really something there that we could um, add to it because basically what we had was we had all this data which is essentially a spreadsheet mm. and what we wanted to do is help people kind of analyse that data and really get the stories out of it. So instead we had to have two tasks, one of which was to make it uh, easier for our journalists to use and one of which was to make it easier for people out there in the real world to understand it. I think there's nothing really particularly clever about what we're doing. It's just, um, I guess we're thinking of doing it. That's all it is really. Um, so that's so again, you know, we, I think having the kind of the lack of fear of big data sets and w- knowing how to use them really kind of gave us um, a bit of an edge there that we were able to kind of tell stories in a way that people wouldn't have been able to do. We actually did that BMP thing as well, but we did it slightly differently. We did it for the newspaper. But we felt it was relevant there because you could see the strength of support. Although you're talking about quite small numbers, 52 people in Halifax, for instance. Yeah. But um, what we what we feel with all this stuff is that we we're, we're not about kind of reproducing personal data. So even with the WikiLeaks stuff, we've been very careful about what we published. For instance, we published the um, every IED attack from the Afghanistan WikiLeaks folder. Um, and uh, with Iraq, we published every Wednesday where somebody died. We took out the summary field because we were worried about endangering people's lives. And with the cables, we've been very, very careful. We were only publishing a few every day, and the ones we're publishing, we're, we're going through, we're editing, and we're redacting kind of personal details. I think it's there's a new level of responsibility you have as a journalist not to um, get somebody killed. 
I guess, um, but also you want to be able to tell a story, and this is you know the raw journalism. So you, you have to be responsible. I think with all of these things, we 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 think very carefully about what we publish and what we don't publish. But I say we're not really interested in that personal information. You know, like in some countries, in Norway, where everybody's tax records are online. Yeah, we don't do that in the UK, do we? And um, uh, I think that what we get, we still get a very rich seam of data that we can mine. I think it's um, made obvious that people need to have these kind of skills to break down the data. Now, it has to be part of the job of being a journalist. And also because you know people need to be able to handle huge sets of documents now. So how do you do that? And you know, do you how when do you rope in your readers to help you? Because you got you know we've got millions of people online who are looking at the Guardian. So we should be using those people. Um, I think with some big data sets, and others. I think we need to work out ways to make that data easy to interrogate for our staff as well as for the public. I think people seem really excited by it, as the potential for it, it's something new is happening, it's not really that resource heavy. A lot of the stuff we do, we use free tools, we use, you know, some of our graphic, the graphics done in-house, but they're done using Illustrator, which a lot of people have, or we use Excel, or we use, um, you know, Many Eyes, or Timetric, or whatever, and all of these things are free or simple or cheap to use. So in a sense, what we're doing is really not that resource intensive, I would say, it's more um, thinking in a, in a new way. In some ways, it's, it's using technology to complement and support your reporting, so it should make life easier, if anything. Um, well, what we want to do is really kind of build it up. I think uh, involve more people from around the world, uh, you know, get more of a picture of what's going out on out there. And also, um, I think I'd like it if you know, we start developing our own visualisation tools, um, things just to make kind of getting the data easier. I think we need a proper, a better search tool as well. And you know, at the moment, we don't really have much competition in this among other news organisations. There is competition amongst other people out there in the web, not among news organisations. So we want to make sure we keep that position. There are some good reporters uh, on other organisations. In terms of the support we've been given from within the organisation, I, I don't think there's anybody in the UK certainly that has that kind of. Uh, you know, support and vision that mm. that we had from our yeah. people managing the Guardian. I mean, I guess I mean I suppose my interest is more in the kind of the raw data itself. But I would say the key things are that you have to keep things really simple, and you have to treat the data like you treat any other information. It just happens to be numbers. You interrogate it in the same way you trust it, in the same way you wouldn't necessarily trust every word you read. You, you know, you have to look at it properly, and. Um, you have to ask kind of journalistic questions of it. What do you really want to know about this information and data? Not, is the story going to be here? That's what I would say are the most important things.